In this video, I'm going to review the top 5 best GPUs for Ryzen 5 3400G. When it comes to the Ryzen 5 3400G, you really do not have to take extreme measures, as long as you are staying in the territory of stock clocks. Is indeed the best GPU for Ryzen 5 3400G as it efficiently disperses heat and delivers superb cooling performance, while ensuring long-term reliability. The Ryzen 5 3400G comes from the AMD 3rd generation Ryzen CPU family, but is much different than most of the pack. To ease your distress, I researched a number of GPUs and filtered out some of the best for Ryzen 5 3400G. I leave the links to the discussed GPUs in the description, you can check them for more information and the latest prices. So let's get started. At number 1 it is Zotac Gaming GeForce GTX 1660 Ti. The Zotac GeForce GTX 1660 Ti is an intermediate graphics card with 1536 shader units and 6GB of gddr 6 b RAM. That is why the GTX 1660 Ti is very suitable for the 1080p game. The Zotac GPU is very compact and measures only 17.3cm which is why it can be installed in very small cases. Zotac GeForce GTX 1660 Ti twin fan complies with NVIDIA specifications for the GTX 1660 Ti, which means Zotac has chosen not to exceed this model, which is our best GPU for Ryzen 5 3400G therefore. The maximum stabilization clock is up to 1770 MHz, while some GTX 1660 Ti models can raise their basic clocks higher than 1800 MHz. NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1660 Ti is a powerful, mid-tier, Turing-based desktop GPU. The GTX 1660 Ti relies on the TU-116 chip with 1536 shader units, 48 ROPs, 96 TMU, and a 192-bit wide memory bus, clock at 6 GHz, effective 12 GHz, bandwidth, up to 288 GB second. The TU-116 chip and other Turing-based GPUs are manufactured using a 12NM production process. However, the model of GTX 1660 Ti does not come with the latest features such as DLSS and real-time ray tracing. However, there are some structural improvements when it comes to floating points and overall performance. These tasks can now be performed simultaneously. Other notable features include adaptive shading, integrated cache, DisplayPort 1.4, HDMI 2.0b, HDR, simultaneous multi-projection, and H.265 encodings and decoding, Plurity 3.0. The Zotac GeForce GTX 1660 Ti performs much better on gaming benches than on artificial benchmarks. The AMD Radeon RX Vega 56 beats the GTX 1660 Ti in most games and fights with the GeForce RTX 2060. A little more performance can be seen in the GPU with overtime. To achieve maximum overflow power, we have raised the power limit from 100 to 110 percent. Doing so increases the TDP to 132 watts. We were able to increase the core clock by 100 MHz and the memory size by 800 MHz. This resulted in a maximum memory bandwidth of 326.4 GB per second and a high intensity clock of up to 1870 MHz. After the introduction of GPUs based on Turing, graphics cards based on Pascal began to run out of stock. The NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1660 Ti is a video card and Turing without ray tracing or tensor cores. The GTX 1660 T also does not support the LSS, as this is where NVIDIA decided to draw the line between the GTX and the RTX series. We received a GPU sample from our partner Zotac, because NVIDIA does not produce its version of the GPU under its founder's edition version. At number 2 it is ASUS Dual NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2060 Super EVO. ASUS Dual RTX 2060 Super OHG EVO is the third ASUS of NVIDIA's RTX 2060 Super, an upgraded version of the original RTX 2060, which is the best GPU for Ryzen 5 3400G coming behind the new Radeon RX 5700 and AMD's Radeon RX 5700 TX. The new RTX 2060 Super feels very much like a response from NVIDIA, which may be taken by the excellent price offered by a new Navi-based graphics processor. The ASUS Dual RTX 2060 Super OHG EVO does not compare well with the AMD Radeon RX 5700, and all RTX 2060 Super cards will compete with it. Well these statistics will be subject to the games you play, and the rig you use on the GPU, both supporting and boost clock speeds are higher on the AMD Radeon RX 5700. The very first thing to indicate is that the ASUS Dual RTX 2060 Super EVO is bulky. It measures 267 by 118 by 58 mm and features a chunky aluminum backplate designed to help set up the main circuit board, tracking channels, and other valuable features in transformation and breakdown. It has a 2.7 slot footprint, which means the ASUS Dual RTX 2060 Super OHG EVO will take three cables from your motherboard. 
Although it is a giant beast, a sus says its scale has used size to pack on the wings of the heatsink, which in theory, gives you an overhead room. Speaking of overcrowding and cooling, the Asus Dual RTX 2060 Super OHE Evo features two axial tech fans, with longer fan pages than previous designs to help keep everything cool. The RTX 2060 Super card is designed to play games with QHD 1440p resolution settings. Running games in 4K is officially possible with modern AAA titles, and you will only be able to attain good frame values after playing around with the graphics settings. It's a different story with games, released several years ago. However, like running the Dirt Rally on the RTX 2060 Super, we saw the coastal frame rate over 60 FPS with a resolution set in 4K judging by the benchmark results. The most competitive of the RTX 2060 Super is the AMD Radeon RX 5700. It is very rare to be among the cards in terms of performance, but by following the proud and ultimately cheaper ray track, your purchase decision will likely depend on your preference for lighting technology. In addition to NVIDIA ray tracing support, the RTX 2060 Super has one notable advantage over its AMD rival, and it is that two-fan program. If you would like to take a graphics card that will guarantee the future of tracking rays instead of a cheap, full-purpose Quad HD card, then take the RTX 2060 Super. At number 3 it is XFX RX 5700 XT RAW 2 HGB. At the first entry in the list, we have the XFX RX 5700 XT RAW 2 dot seeing as XFX is known for its long period cards and economical prices, it makes sense that one of the cheapest RX 5700 XT models could come from them. First of all, you may notice that XFX has updated its design, which is pretty good considering that their RX 400 and RX 500 series look cheap and not very attractive. The RAW 2 removes the gaudy highlights and features a completely black cover that blends well with the stainless steel back. To our knowledge, this design works very well and is much better than what XFX should have provided in the past. As for my override settings we mentioned earlier, the performance here jumps by about 5%, so nothing is too exciting, as we're all already used to seeing that with Navi 10 GPUs, but we've been able to pull power consumption down a bit by about 10 to 20 W because the card was also not allowed in that case. Like we said, fans run on the faster side than we usually see in the RX 5700 XT and RX 5700 graphics card reviews, so the acoustics are not so bad, but also not so bad. We also see fans running between 1600 and 1800 RPMs, especially. As for the performance of the game, we should note that the XFX RX 5700 XT RAW 2 is not overly functional, so it has the same core and improves clock speed as an indicator of AMD. However, the XFX version offers slightly better performance due to dual open-air cooling, which is a much better solution than a hot GPU running like this. That means, if you're trying to make the RX 5700 XT fit your budget and don't overdo it extremely, then this could be the right card for you. At number 4 it is EVGA GeForce RTX 2070 Super, the new NVIDIA GeForce RTX GPU restored graphics and set a new performance bar. Enabled new NVIDIA Turing GPU and NVIDIA RTX platform, new graphics cards that include real-time tracking, artificial intelligence, and scheduled shading. This is not the only new way to hear games, this is the ultimate PC gaming experience. The front panel of the card includes various effects. There are three DisplayPort 1.4 outputs, one HDMI 2.0B output, and one Type-C USB port for Virtulink level. The RTX 2070 Super is not limited to high performance. Powerful computer programs can use GPUs 2560 cores to speed up operations using CUDA or other APIs. Increase card clock speed in real time based on targeted temperature. If the card is operating below the set temperature, GPU Boost 4.0 will increase the clock speed to improve performance. The directed temperature can be reset to the preferences so that the card can work more quietly with daily activities and classic games and run with a full slope during the high sequence of high stakes play. With Ansel, gamers can design a game gun they want, pointing the camera in any direction and from any beautiful place in the gaming world. They can capture screenshots up to 32 times the screen resolution and then zoom in on their choice without losing fidelity. With photo filters, they can add effects in real time before taking a photo. They can also capture 360-degree stereo photospheres for viewing on a VR headset or on Google Cardboard. The brain of ICX2, CX technology, detects temperatures in various locations on the graphics card and rescues asynchronous fans to provide optimal airflow for each card location. When used with a guard with G-Sync hardware installed, the guard's refresh rate will sync and lock to the graphics card's frame rate. Establishing the sync removes tearing and stuttering that may result from standard screen refresh rates, especially those important for 3D stereoscopic play. The added benefit of G-Sync is reduced when gamers will benefit from improved command response time. 
and the last one is NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1660 Ti. The GeForce GTX 1660 Ti is a performance segment graphics card by NVIDIA. Built on the 12nm process, and based on the TU116 graphics processor, in its 216-400A1 variant, the card supports DirectX 12. This ensures that all modern games will run on GeForce GTX 1660 Ti. The 2116 graphics processor is an average size chip with a die area of 284 square millimeters and 6,600 million transistors. It features 1536 shading units, 96 texture mapping units, and 48 ROPs. NVIDIA has paired 6GB GDDR6 memory with the GeForce GTX 1660 Ti, which are connected using a 192-bit memory interface. The GPU is operating at a frequency of 1500 MHz, which can be boosted up to 1770 MHz, memory is running at 1500 MHz, 12 Gbps effective. Being a dual-slot card, the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1660 Ti draws power from a 1x8-pin power connector, with a power draw rated at 120 watts maximum. Display outputs include 1x DVI, 1x HDMI, 1x Display Port. GeForce GTX 1660 Ti is connected to the rest of the system using a PCI Express 3.0x16 interface. The card's dimensions are 229mm by 111mm by 35mm, and it features a dual-slot cooling solution. I have come to the end of my review. These all five are the best GPU for Ryzen 5 3400G for better performance. Now it's up to you which will meet your budget and requirements. In my opinion, if you want more performance, the max you should go with is the EVGA GeForce RTX 2070 Super. So you should try to balance everything as much as possible. Don't forget to subscribe our channel. Thanks for watching this video.